Hello Year 6, Miss Edelson here again. Welcome back to the next lesson in our Cool Britannia topic, which is all about the significant changes that happened in Britain after World War II. This week we're moving on to a new decade and focusing on a historical event that took place in 1971. D-E-C-I-M-A-L-I-S-A-T-I-O-N Now you might think that money in Britain has always been the same and that 100 pence has always made a pound, 10 10 pence pieces make a pound and that our coins have always been the same and had the same values. However, the decimal system of pounds and pence that we have today is relatively modern and didn't come into use until February the 15th, 1971. The currency used in Britain is called pounds sterling. Today we're going to learn all about the old money system that Britain used before this date, how it worked and all about how the changeover happened in 1971. We'll look at what everyday items would have cost at the time and how everyone had to suddenly begin to convert the values and use new coins to pay. Remember this was a time before credit and debit cards and contactless payments, so cash was king. Let's take a look at one of the public information films that was made at the time to let the general public know all about decimal currency and what was going to happen. The new decimal money will be with us on D-Day, Decimal Day, the 15th of February, 1971. The pound will be divided into a hundred new pence and we'll do our decimal shopping in pounds and new pence only. Here are the new coins, six of them. The three silver ones are already in use. The 50 new pence equal to 10 shillings. The 10 new pence equal to 2 shillings. And the 5 new pence equal to 1 shilling. The three copper coins will be introduced on D-Day. The 2 new pence, the new penny, and the new half penny. Remember the pound stays the same. Only the coins which make up the pound are changing. It's important to know that the British government had been debating the issue of decimalising British currency for over a hundred years before it came into effect. Most other countries in the world had a system that was decimalised and Britain wanted to ensure it was easy for other countries to trade with us and for money to be converted more simply. But each time the British government began to look at changing the values of the coins that divided a pound, they could never agree. It was only in 1960, after the success of decimalisation in South Africa, that the government decided to set up the Committee of the Inquiry on Decimal Currency in 1961, which reported in 1963. The adoption of the changes suggested in the report was announced on the 1st of March in 1966. The Decimal Currency Board, or the DCB, was created to manage the transition, although the plans were not approved by Parliament until the Decimal Currency Act in May 1969. Let's begin by getting to know the coins that were in use before 1971 when money was counted in pounds, shillings and pence. The pre-decimalised system was abbreviated to LSD for short. The abbreviation originates from the Latin currency denominations Libra, Solidi and Denari. Here's pound. Now, straight away you're going to notice the pound was not a pound coin that you're used to. Let's had a pound note then. I really want you to get an idea of the size of it so you can see if I just lift it up here. What a pound note was like not too large really pounds shillings here's a shilling coin and then pence these are significantly larger if you look at the size of a one pence piece quite a lot bigger than we're used to today so pounds shillings and here's an old penny, 1967, on the coin. You really get to see the size of it. Strange to think that the old system worked on 240 of these making a pound. Our new system, there's 100 pennies per pound. In the pre-decimal system, 240 of these rather large coins 
would make up a pound. So that would mean that when decimalisation took place in 1971, a new penny would have been worth about 2.4 pence. To make it easier to convert, they rounded it up After to 2.5 or 2.5 pence. was the three penny coin. I need to get an idea of the scale of this one. Quite small, got some depth to it, ridges, not quite sure how many sides. A three penny piece. It seems strange that there was a denomination of coin worth three, as now we're used to a system that works on twos and fives and tens and one hundreds which I think is simpler. However, remember at this time that the pound was worth 240 pence, or D as they were called then. Three is a factor of 24. So how many three pence pieces, or thrupney bits as they were called then, would you need to make a pound in 1970? After the three pence piece, the next smallest value of coin was the sixpence. It reminds me a little bit of one of our new five pence pieces when I see this now. It's worth six pence. Now this is starting to make a little bit more sense as you know that two three pence pieces, get two of those, two thrupney bits, two three pence pieces, make one sixpence. And we know that six is of course a factor of 240. The next smallest value of coin was the shilling. You can see it here. It, I would say, is about the size of one of our 10 pence pieces today. But it wasn't worth 10. One shilling was in fact worth 12 pennies. So that was two. Sixpence. Starting to make a little bit more sense now. So if you had a three pence piece, two of those make a sixpence. Two sixpence pieces make a shilling. Following that, there was a two shilling coin. Just see the scale of it in comparison to the one shilling. If I move that one over, there's the two shilling coin there. Now if one shilling is worth 12 pence. Two shillings, of course, are going to be worth, that's right, 24 pence or 24d, as you would say at the time. Starting to become clear? How many of these coins, two shilling pieces, if they're worth 24d, would you need to make a pound? That's right, you'd need 10 of these coins to make a pound. The very next coin is this rather large chunky one here. This is the half crown. Now a half crown coin was worth two shillings and sixpence. How many D or pennies was this half crown worth then if it was worth the same as two shillings? And sixpence. 30 D or one eighth of a pound. You need eight half crowns to make one pound. You could also get at the time, these are really nice and big and chunky, five shilling coins. which were called crowns. Remember, a shilling is worth 12d or 12 pence. So what is this five shilling coin worth? Five lots of 12. Yep, that's right. Well done with your quick arithmetic. It's worth 60d or 60 pennies. What fraction of a pound is this? You would need four of these coins to make one pound. So if this crown, this five shilling coin, which was known as a crown, is worth five shillings and you would need four of these to make a pound, it's worth a quarter, 
you would think that there'd be an even bigger coin that would be worth the 10 shillings to be half of a pound. But in fact, there were no more coins after this one. The 10 shillings or half of a pound was a note in 1970, which looked like this. It's around about the same size as the pound note. If I can show you them both together so you get an idea. They're not very large notes, probably no bigger than a five pound note is today. Quite small. Look how young Queen Elizabeth looks on the 10 shilling note there. And then after the 10 shilling note, you had the pound. And a one pound note was worth 20 shillings. Let's see how this old money system of pounds, shillings and pence would have been written and what it would buy you in 1970. In 1970, the Daily Mirror newspaper, which was the most popular newspaper at the time, cost 6D, or sixpence as it was known then, and sixpence was going to be worth two and a half pence in new money. It's interesting to know that prices have risen a fair amount since the 1970s. We call that inflation. A copy of the Daily Mirror today would cost you 85p. Next, let's look at this old cafe menu from 1970. Sausage, egg and chips is listed as being one and six. This means one shilling and six pence. With the new conversion, one shilling was now going to be worth 5p. Six pence would now be worth two and a half new pence. Now we don't have half pennies anymore, they went out of circulation in 1984, but at the time they were a useful coin. Let's look at a slightly more expensive item next. This lady's hat advert shows the prices of a hat to be 19 and 11. This was a penny off a pound. Shops still do this marketing ploy on us today by giving us prices like 99p rather than a pound to make it sound cheaper. What was 19 and 11 at the time? 19 shillings and 11 pence, which was 239d. Remember, there was 240d to the pound. The price below it is for even cheaper hats. The prices here are at 10, meaning 10 shillings and no pence. So 10 times 12 would be 120d, or half of a pound. But remember, with the conversion in 1971, a shilling was now going to be worth 5p. So 5 times 10, and this hat is 50p, which sounds very cheap to us today. In the 1970s, this Bush 22-inch colour TV cost £289.19. shillings. That would have been a huge amount of money then when you find out that the average weekly wage was less than £40. Most people rented TVs rather than owned them, but as they've become much cheaper and easier to produce over time, today TVs are much cheaper. Conversion of the price from £289.19 shillings would have taken the price of the TV to £289.95. By the late 1960s and 70s, there were lots of things around that we still have today. I'm sure you'll recognise these lollies and cones and tubs of ice cream and a crunchy bar. We still buy that today, as well as other types of chocolate and favourite children's comics. But the prices today are quite different. People at the time were nervous about moving from the old money system to the new decimal currency, even though it seems so much more straightforward to us today. The government made films to reassure people and remind them that the decimalisation day was coming up and what to expect. They called it D-Day, not to be confused with the D-Day landings that happened in the Second World War. In this case, the D stood for decimalisation. Let's watch some of the footage from the time getting to the introduction of a decimal coinage and we shall be the last major country in the world to go over although we were one of the first to start thinking about it it's one pound 87 new pence please old coins for new Old half crowns being melted down at the Royal Mint to become part of the new decimal coinage. All our wages, pensions, postal orders, stamps and bills will be in decimal form. The advantages of the change are many. 
Apart from the fact that almost every other world currency is decimal, it will mean that accounting's quite well, along with the five and fifty new penny pieces. But how will we manage when the rest of the new coins come in? Well, I think it can be summed up, really, in saying that 12 into 10 won't go. Uh, and therefore, when you come to deal with the copper part of the coinage, one's got to get used to a new scale of values, of, of getting our old pennies into our new pennies. For a tin of pineapple slices. Each is one. Wheat. Yes, just one. Uh, wheat, now the wheat for spread. Which is six Up to now, from the public's point of view, little seems to have been done by the board except the introduction of the five, ten and fifty penny pieces and the withdrawal of the halfpenny and the half crown. But behind the scenes, a lot of preparation has been going on. Many stores have been busy teaching their staff, including executives, what the new coins will mean. And companies and banks as well as shops are planning for the changeover. And the Gary Baldy biscuit. Now, we're just run over it again. Yes. These, this is a pound, of course. Yes. This is the 50 penny piece. These are the 10 penny coins. This is the 2 penny coin. That's the 1 penny. And that's the new half penny coin. Yeah. So are you clear now? Yes. OK, miss, would you like to carry on ringing up? Sales girls up and down the country are being taught to handle the new coin. Can anybody tell me what's going to happen in February next year? Something very, very important. Alicia. They're going um, to let the decimal money come out. Yes, let the decimal money come out. What's the decimal money, Christopher? Well, all the old coins will be either burnt or melted. I think they'll be melted. They don't get burned. And um, all the new decimal coins will be put into currency and they'll be used. They'll be in use. Children are now taught in school to think and work in decimal coins. One of the main reasons for the change is that it is estimated that up to six months will be saved in teaching time by the introduction of decimal money. For children like these, it is easier to think in the new money. Can anybody tell me how many new pennies are going to have in one pound? Gordon, a hundred, yes, a hundred new pennies. My mum doesn't like the 50 pence, but I do the new um, pens be because they're easy to add up when I'm doing my arithmetic and you and you only have to count in um, pounds and pence. And in the old, old days you had to uh, add up going one, two, three, four like that to make a shilling and so on. Can I want you to have two plates please? The decimal currency board has been given no power to control prices but they've drawn up conversion tables to show shoppers what the old price was in relation to the new. And these approved tables will be on view in most shops. The most important thing the board will do is to send to every household before D-Day a booklet which explains the new currency in simple question and answer form. The booklet will also contain... 80, 90, one pound. Uh, no, I didn't find it terribly easy. What do you think of those coins you got in the change? Yes, I think they'll be all right when we get used to them. They'll be lighter to carry around. I don't think it's as difficult as I thought it might be. It wasn't so bad. What did you think of the, the new copper coins that you got? I don't like them. I don't like them very much. This little one is too small and light, and the penny is a little bit light as well. The two pence piece isn't so bad, but I'm not very keen on the other two. I got a bit confused with the when it said half pence. I had to think twice there. Well, I think one has to think in, in new pence and not, in think of, uh, not think in terms of the, you know, the old currency and the new and try and convert each thing. To help people get used to the new system, shopkeepers would display a conversion table like this in their shop so that people could quickly see what the old prices were in comparison to the new and to help them understand how to pay. People at the time were concerned that it would mean that the prices would go up and that they were actually spending more money, but usually prices were rounded down rather than up. Now that you know all about the old currency system, your task for this week is to see if you can convert some of the old prices into new pounds and pence. Shopkeepers would have had these conversion tables out to help people understand at the time. On the task sheet, you'll find lots of items that people would have needed to buy and the prices are given in old money. 
How much do they now need to pay? And can you work out the difference in price from what that would cost you now? As always, if you don't want to print this sheet out, you can just look at it on the screen and you can write your new prices on any sheet of paper that you have. The next task for your history learning this week is called Creative Coins. There are sometimes special coins released by the Royal Mint where all UK currency is made to commemorate significant events in history or significant British people. Take a look at your coins at home more closely to see which events you might have in your money box. You're going to design your own this week on this 50p template or you can draw one on another piece of paper and say why you've chosen to commemorate this event or this special person. I'm going to give you some looks at some 50p pieces that are already in circulation now to give you some ideas. Good luck with your home learning this week, Year 6. It should it not make sense? The half crown too has gone for good. A coin that foreigners never understood. Now some people who were feeling very bright have put their heads together just to make things right. They have made it easy for every citizen. Cause all we have to do is count from one to 